Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I've got a new friend online. He's from up in the north part of town. He's up in Canada, and his name is, get it right here, Dane Stevens. You there, Dane? I am here. Thanks for having me, Brad. Are you related to uh, Darren and Samantha Stevens? Remember that? Oh, that's Rich? funny. I didn't even put that. I, I, funny, I have a cousin named Darren, but... Oh, really? <laughs> I don't, he's not in the army and he, he doesn't have a wife who wiggles his nose. So not, not the right one. <laughs> oh, you said the army. You're thinking, nose. Of, you're thinking of I Dream of Jeannie. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, get them all mixed up. You know, the Flintstones and the Jetsons. It's different ages, but the same kind of thing. <laughs> same kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. So you are up in Canada. Are you on the west side of Canada or the east side of Canada or the middle? I'm on the west side. I actually just moved. I've been in, in uh, Vancouver, and I just moved up to a gorgeous little place called Soyuz on the warmest lake in Canada, uh, Lake Soyuz. It's fantastic up here. I love it. I've gone, my wife has been there, but I have not. I got to get seriously. Over there. It's really nice up in that oh, area. I've it, it, it is. Yeah, it is a mecca up here, like a mecca in the desert. It's all vineyards. It's uh, the Napa Valley of Canada up here. So yeah, pretty awesome. How long have you been there? Uh, only since, well, we were, I just did a book tour. Uh, the timing worked pretty well. I went down the west coast of the U.S. And uh, we got back in March. It was when we, we moved back here, moved here. And uh, so been here since, well, basically since March, I guess, March, April. Very cool. Since we've been here. But you got the accent and stuff, so you must have been in Canada for a long time. You're a Canadian <laughs> citizen? Born and raised hockey player. It's just, yep, the way it is. Oh, that's right. Hockey and Labats, right? You got to have it. <laughs> I don't drink Labats. We no longer have the stubby bottles. I do drink beer. <laughs> well, I've been in Minneapolis, Minnesota all my life, other than a couple of years in LA, a couple of years in Nashville, North yep. Carolina. But deep roots here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Did though. you say Nashville? Asheville, not Nashville. Oh, Asheville. Oh, Oregon. Yeah, I've heard such great things about that place, too. Nope, not, not Ash, uh, um, Ashland, Oregon, but Good North thing you Carolina, your geography. Asheville. <laughs> well, there's a border up there, you know. We're going to build a wall. No, that's, down, that's south. I've heard. <laughs> this one's next. <laughs> no, I Ooh. love the Canadians. They got a lot of spirit. They talk kind of funny, though, with the about. Can't get rid of us. We're everywhere. It's a boat in... Uh, <laughs> Never mind. They, I, when I was living in Los Angeles, they'd say, well, you're either from Canada or Minnesota. I just go, oh, okay. That's, that's what they said. <laughs> it's kind of weird because like, uh, you know, the whole, the Fargo movie. I know. That's our, our slang, you know, oh, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. Fargo is the Dakotas. It's not Minnesota. Oh, is that right? Yeah. It's on the other, it's the border funny. over there. It's, it's right on the border Power of Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. Power of suggestion, huh? People, it is. huh? That's what it is. <laughs> Well, people are kind of myopic and they know what they know. You know, a lot of times they, they, they really, they get into their rut. We're going to kind of get into a little research on what you're doing. Um, Cause it's, it's fascinating how a person's behavior can kind of be um, almost predetermined, but you said you got a book. You got the book with you. Can you show us? Uh, I do right there. Reclaim your power to create your best life. And it, uh, you know, kind of a bit of what we're talking about shows us how we work and, ultimately gives you the keys to your life back. So well, it's, a, it's a powerful thing. My wife is a, like a lifestyle coach. She oh. was a Spanish teacher, teacher at the University of Minnesota and she got out of that. She'd been doing it for like 30 years. She got into coaching and it's, it's very powerful that you have like a, I'll say a third entity talking to you because when you're self-talk and you do your own deal, you're just talking and repeating the stuff that you learned from the past and the only thing that you know for the future and you're stuck in that little spot and you need someone like you to come in and go, hey, you thought about this? And then you have that aha light bulb right. moment, right? Well, it's interesting because this process has very little to do with me or the facilitator. We don't, we don't tell our clients anything. We guide them. We facilitate them to gain access to their subconscious mind, yeah. which is our most powerful creative faculty. And like you're just talking about, most people don't have a clue what they think and they believe at the level of the subconscious mind, their most powerful creative faculty. So for them to have something come through them where they go, what? And there they have the aha moment and it's all from them. We help them to 
get there, but uh, you know, you, we have the answers within us and it will show us why we're getting what we're getting in our life and why we're not getting what we say we want in our life from the inside. And we will find out why it shows us literally how we're working and why we're creating what we are in our life. So well, it's, I remember that uh, meditation was looked at sort of a woo woo weird thing, but now it's a common thing. And that's kind of what you need to do is get into that neutral meditative state. So you can get out of those, uh, that victimhood or that fast yeah. life. Yeah. Stuff yeah. And all that, get into if life. your reference point is your thinking mind, you're probably living a version of hell to some degree because it will, it will run you. And it, this programming is all from the past and it will tell you untruths all day long. And how did you get into this? So these processes, it's the neurotrauma healing process and THP, and it goes into the power which is the SRC or soul recognition process. And I got into these out of sheer necessity when I had a well-meaning therapist try to force a childhood trauma out of me. And when I went to her, I was doing quite well in my life in all areas except for my relationships. And in that, I thought, hmm, have I dealt with this? And um, you know, I'll, I'll say it, it's been a bit taboo, but it's not exactly uncommon. It was a sexual abuse issue from my childhood. And I wondered if I dealt with it, so I had to look into it. And I went to some groups and that didn't quite, quite work for me. I did a bunch of counseling and nothing seemed to really work. And this one counselor therapist, or actually therapist slash healer, I guess, came highly recommended. So I went to see her and I knew nothing of trauma at the time and very little about energy at the time. So I was really, you know, in her hands. And after a few sessions in, and she wasn't cheap, she asked if I wanted to go for a home run. And, you know, who doesn't want to hit a home run? Uh, she failed to tell me that you could go, you could hit a foul ball and things, uh, she told me when this breaks, stuff will happen, but I was just so grounded in my life and had, you know, very strong spiritual practice and really grounded in my life. I didn't think I could be knocked off. So I said, absolutely, let's go. And uh, when it broke, I was instantly scared. And I can remember vividly right to this day, she had me twisted on the bed in some position, tell me to go there, go there. And I was so out in the ozone, I couldn't even tell which way was up. And when I got off the table, I felt unstable and I had this feeling of fear, you know, for no apparent reason. And I assumed it would subside and go away, just something that, that happened. And it did not. Right. This feeling of instability and fear, you know, stayed in me and the inside being the creator of what we experienced on the outside, my whole world started to crumble. I felt like I had been plugged into a 220 volt outlet. I was just jittery and I couldn't handle it. And uh, I lost everything. Within 18 months, I was broke. And within three years, I was homeless. And she quit seeing me because I ran out of money, but also because she didn't know what she did and didn't know how to fix it. Is oh. what I so um, it took me five years to figure somebody who could tell me what happened to me. And then another one year before I could actually, uh, before I discovered what I teach now and what I, what, uh, I have developed. So, wow. yeah. So sort of kind of been there, done that kind of thing. And that really hits home with me because I, I have a friend that um, he does breath work and I took one of his breath work sessions and I was working through some things. I didn't know what I was working through and uh, we do all the breathing thing and it puts you into sort of a meditative state. And I woke up and I, we were, we we're trying to figure out what the thing was that uh, I was having challenges with. And I woke up just craving chocolate mm. and what was in my head was oh. this, this nut goody candy bar. And when we hmm. traced it back to was when my, I have some alcoholic, I had some alpha, alcoholic parents and they yep. used to go to the bar and leave me at home. And my reward was they brought back a nut goody candy bar. Got and it. That was my reward for them abandoning me. And right. I really thought I had abandonment issues, but obviously right. as a young child, that's what developed. And I could not believe how much I was craving those nut goodies. And I, I went and stopped at a gas station and got about six of them and ate them all. <laughs> I was really craving it. Right. So obviously, there was a, an attachment there yep. to that specific brand of candy bar and why. Right. And, right. and I realized that all they're doing is they're going out to the club, they're going to come back. But that's a big thing for a little kid. Yeah. How old were you? I guess probably seven, eight, nine, ten, something. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. As kids, um, you know, we, we are sponges, we absorb right. everything. 
and they say that where our persona is set by age five. So with that, you know, it's I like our it programming 10. is already there. So even at age 10, you still, it was impactful because that no, was probably a little scary to be left alone. And sure. you know, that reward is what well, it may, you know, may very well have been at a lot younger age too. I don't know. Right. Both parents are deceased, so I can't ask. Right. You know, so it's right. only me right. and them. Yeah. So. The, it's, it's like you, you have experienced though, that these experiences are still very much alive in your body. Oh, totally. I even still, even though I believe I've healed a lot of that, I still have these issues. Like if someone will just leave and I'm thinking, but I, at least I'm conscious of it now. And I, I'm right. assuming that's kind of what your system or yeah. your product or. Yeah. So when you say trauma, most people think of trauma as somebody who's been in a car accident or right. the experience of war or, you know, what's severely abused, you know, physically or emotionally in some way, but all trauma means the, 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 uh, definition of trauma is something stuck looping in your nervous system unprocessed. And that can occur from living with a high functioning alcoholic where we have to either change our, what we do or, or alter our behavior in some way. So our natural energy flow doesn't come out in the way it normally would, mm -hmm. or even something like neglect, which doesn't seem like there's any trauma, any abuse there at all. But what happens when we get neglected is we change potentially our view of ourselves or how we, we perceive ourselves or maybe even the world. And therefore, once again, our natural energy flow is altered in some way. We've had to change our behavior. Oh. So you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that doesn't have some degree what's termed trauma looping in them. Well, those yeah. situations can be very, very minimal to the other person, but they may be very, very maximum to, to the person that's, that's affected. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If all of a sudden, I've, if I'm really feeling lonely as a kid and they're yeah. going to go off to the bar, I really feel like they just totally rejected me and severed me. You know, yeah. It's just going off the night, coming back, we'll be back in yeah. midnight. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in that, you know, could be anything from I'm not important, I don't matter, uh, abandonment and being fearful, being feeling alone, there's nobody here all those things. And as kids, we make very illogical decisions because we have undeveloped minds. Mm -hmm. So uh, parenting is just so key. The one thing we don't need a certificate for or to get training for uh, is one yeah. of the easiest things. And, and it's just the most important thing because There's our no owner's kids, manual for them mom and dad. No, no, no. You got kids? So, I do know. I acquired two from my other half, my wonderful Annie B. And they're uh, moved away. They're they're gone. So, uh, but I never had my own kids, and uh, that was kind of my path in that way because, um, you know, the work that I've done has been quite all-consuming. So well, in that, it's interesting I just, too because I don't have any kids and I have no desire to have any. And it's possible that that was kind of pre-programmed into me that maybe yeah, subconsciously I don't want to put someone else through what I went right. through. So right. Yeah. 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 And, well, you, know, you know, it's when I look at it, yeah, I, I was, uh, I went through some real stuff and, and you know, uh, didn't have my stuff together growing up. So yeah, maybe it's a good thing I didn't have kids. I'd be great with kids now, but uh, I'm not gonna, I'm, we're good. <laughs> oh, there's enough of them out there. And if you want one, you can rent one for the weekend. Or well, you know, yeah, there's 8 billion of us. We don't need any more of us. We're, we're good. <laughs> okay, for a while. So can you share a little bit of how your process actually works if someone's interested in something like this? Sure. What, what they have, would they end up going through? So it's a left right brain process. Um, on October the 14th, I have a webinar, introductory webinar. They can learn about it and shows you there. If you want to do one-on-one -on -one stuff, I can send you to a site uh, and the book has the full process in it. You can buy the book. Most people are going to need help in the start. I did. Um, even though I got introduced to the process, it, it's, it wasn't developed and we know ourselves too well. So we need somebody outside of ourselves and ultimately somebody who can help you through the maze of your subconscious, who understands the subconscious, who can do it in a safe and gentle manner and also be, be effective for oh, you. Totally. So, um, I yeah. totally get that too, because you need someone else to, to bring it to light. So you, cause if you don't realize that there's a, there's some kind of problem, I wouldn't even call it a problem, but it's something that's just not going right. Yeah. You need someone yeah, to look you know, it up. Yeah. To see if you have a, a we'll term trauma is just look into your world. And if you have any kind of a pattern, negative pattern that you haven't been able to solve, whether it be your health, your wealth, your relationships, your career, what have you, anywhere where you're stuck, anywhere you have a pattern, you keep self-sabotaging yourself, whether it's eating habits or, you know, whatever that is, 
uh, addiction, even depression, I can assure you you have something stuck looping in your nervous system unprocessed. Or if there's just something that's just not working the way that you yeah. think it should be working. Um, like you take something as, as simple as water. Water just finds its way around things. Yeah. Yeah. But unless it's blocked, then it yeah. doesn't. So there might be some kind of energy that's just not flowing. I'll, I'll give you yeah. a quick example of my experience is I was brought up to put things back where I got them. Mm -hmm. that's a system for me and it works really good i put things back where i got them because then i know where they are you know you put the keys on the nightstand i know exactly where they are i know where my keys and my wallet my phone are because that's what i do and um i was in the kitchen washing dishes and i noticed that the the dish soap thing wasn't on the dish soap thing i thought well i put things back it must have been my wife so then you have this little thing going on and then i all of a sudden realize my wife hasn't been here it was me oh. That did that. So there's a little flaw where I could have went into a, how come you don't put things back? Well, it was me that did that. So just being aware of it, it helps a lot that uh, I don't go out and blame other people for my. That's action. yeah. There, there's the first step is awareness. Yeah. And you know, we talk about taking responsibility, but I want to be clear about that. Some, sometimes that can be perceived as blame. At blaming yourself, I am responsible. But what, when in regards to trauma, when we say that, when you understand, when you have a, I, I'm going to go back to a pattern again because they're so easy to spot or easier to spot. So if you have an unwanted behavior, we'll say, that's going on that keeps happening, then you go, oh, it keeps happening. And what's you know with different people maybe or different situations, what's the common denominator? We are. So it's happening inside of us. So to take responsibility is to acknowledge that that negative experience that you had is still alive looping inside of you, that it's still happening inside of you, or this negative pattern, this negative behavior you keep experiencing is happening inside of you. And that's not blame. It's just understanding, oh, it's happening inside it's of me. It's a realization. Yes. And I so, found the issue. Yeah. And like you say, to blame is to give all your power away. So, and there you'll never, that will never end as long as we keep looking outside. Are you a victim or a victor? Yeah. One, one way or the other. Could you yes. hold up your book one more time there so people know what it looks like when they look for it? Reclaim yep, your it power. Is. Yeah, because on Amazon, Reclaim Your Power to Create Your Best Life by moi, Dane Stevens. Okay. And then the website, how do we get a hold of you if we want to dig in deeper? So the, my, my website is danestevensonline.com, D-A-N-E-S-T-E-V-E-N-S, online.com. And there you can get the book and more information about me and more information. The, and the Neurotrauma Healing Process site is anextraordinarylife.ca. That's anextraordinarylife.ca. And there you can check in if you want to do one-on-one -on -one work, you can go there. And on both of the sites, if you go to the calendar, there is a webinar on October the 14th, an introductory web webinar, which will show you about the work and uh, we'll give you an introduction and, and you can see if it'll work for you, if it's something that you'd like to check out. Very cool. Well, Dane, I appreciate you sharing some of this with us and I'm going to get this up to YouTube and beam it out to the universe and let awesome. uh, the algorithms figure things out and all awesome. that with keywords and hashtags and if you could share, also stuff. appreciate that. I and will if, too. If you want to stay on for a little bit after this, um, I will. Uh, I want to have a conversation a little bit, but I'm going to close this one off and boost Thank it you, off the rest. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries. We appreciate you taking the time in. Thank you. <laughs> Peace.